on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Vile Files Freestyle Edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by Allie. Amanda has COVID. Coronavirus. So mm-hmm. she is not with us today. She finally got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, she lasted a long time. I'm That's- glad we're being transparent about it because every time I've had COVID, Nick just is like, Allie's gone. Allie's not. She's uh, was, under the weather. That was like before where it was like, I don't really know <laughs> yeah. what we're supposed to say. Yeah. You Both know? times I've had COVID, you're just like, she's not here. <laughs> I think we told we told people you had COVID. She's oh, got her okay. lady. We were, kind yeah. of more, we were more cryptic <laughs> about it for sure. Yeah. But now it's just now it's, now it's just kind of, of part of mm-hmm. yeah, it's part of life. Yeah. Normalize yeah. it. Normalize, yeah. Normalize the take, vid. Have those tests available. Yeah. It's like yeah. now when you have a runny nose, the first thing you do is like take a COVID test, Absolutely. right? You know, and then and then you go from there. You go off. Be here. responsible in sex and be responsible with your COVID. <laughs> test <you> frequently. <laughs> yeah, truly. <laughs> Tell all your partners. Yeah. Tell all your partners. Uh, well, Fortune Feemster is, is our guest today. Welcome back. Thanks, is Nick. Is our thir- third time on I the think show? It, I think it's our third time. All right. Look at that. Good. Yeah. Look it's at been us. a minute though. It I, has been a I minute. I miss you. I really missed you. I was in Toronto for six months filming, so I didn't see a lot of people. You're crushing life. I appreciate it. You I'm have trying. Your new special out there. <laughs> yeah, good, good fortune. Good fortunes on Netflix right now. It's amazing. If anyone who hasn't watched it, if you're looking for a good comedy special, mm-hmm. Fortune always it. delivers. Thank you. It was really amazing. I appreciate it. I'm proud of it. My my favorite one of my favorite parts is when you talked about the playground in the '80s yeah. and how reckless and <laughs> horrific it was. Yeah, a lot of people, there's a lot of comics that, that tap into that 80s, you know, playground or school situation, but I tried to do my take on it with just uh, how intense it would get. And Yeah, uh, it really would. With Red Rover. It and made yeah. me, yeah, you were talking about <laughs> Dislocate that. Dislocate a shoulder. Slow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hold the line. <laughs> and, the, and the tire, uh, rolling down the tire. Yeah. Was, nope. uh, I don't know if it was specific to the South or if a lot of people did that. No, I, well, I've never done that, but I do, I do know, I knew that was a thing, yeah. like getting in the tire. We actually had, because you mentioned like the merry-go-round, mm-hmm. the wheel of death. I, we, our merry-go-round was already off limits. By the time I was like in the first or second grade, they're yeah. like, no, 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 people have died using this thing. I don't know if it, I'm glad they, they died, were looking but, out for you. Uh, but they had, they took it up. But instead, you know what we did? What? There was like this, uh, you know, the, I guess a jungle gym, right? It had the yeah. tube slide. Yeah. yeah. We would, there was this game we played and as a, like a kid who's a bit of a, what's the, what's the fear of clo- tight spaces? Claustrophobic. Oh, claustrophobic. Yeah. They would see how many Kids, they could jam in <laughs> wow. into a tube nightmare. slide. No, and like, <laughs> oh like, my god, it was so dangerous. Like you would, they would see how many, and you would be packed, yeah. or you'd be like no. up against the tube slide, and there's like three kids under you. Like you could like suffocate. I yeah. remember getting in that and like having a panic attack. I think oh that's why god. I have a fear of like probably. I, would too. Well, I just like convulsed. Yeah. But I can't believe I, I was. You know, I was watching your special, and I'm thinking, how did they ever? Allow this. What teacher was thinking it was okay <laughs> oh. for a bunch of kids to be like, and I remember the kids who like organized it and they had these <laughs> rules. It's like, no. And they had like, they had kids like pushing on the end of the, the tube slide, oh my pushing God. the kids back in. This lasted for like a good week before yeah. the teachers were like, this isn't safe. Well, that's what I was trying to convey is that it was just a different time of like, you were really left to your own devices. <laughs> 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 I, I vividly remember that. I was that's it why was I horrific. Was <laughs> yeah, that's why I said the 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 teachers were all from the blacktop smoking yeah. Virginia Slim, just oh like letting God. me do whatever. Yeah, it's like their their free time. Yeah, from, uh, yeah. Because we had like uh, we also had like con- those big concrete, you know, like the tunnels that you would see like kids yeah. wander into. They would like have those freestanding for us just to hang out in concrete tunnels. Yeah. We like, had like a, one of those, like the bridges. Do you yeah. remember? Like, and they were like very rickety. It wasn't until my friend fell off of it, like it was high up yeah. and like broke an arm or dislocated something. We were like five that they said, oh, we should put bars on either side. <laughs> it was oh, just no a free for all. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It was nuts. But yeah. that, those were the days, but we're tougher now. Yeah, and, they, and now they have like foam. Yeah. You know, yeah. Before it was just like uh-huh. concrete. If you fell, you fell on concrete. We had now. like yeah. pebbles. Like if a kid puked, you just kind of like <laughs> put some more pebbles <laughs> on pebbles. it. Yeah. yeah. You didn't want to dig in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Wild that's stuff. But that's fun about like, you know, putting stuff like that out in a special because you hear from a lot of people. 
and their experience, yeah. you know, growing up. It's that. It, it's a, I will never stop thinking about the children. I, I just remember the title being like, "Get me out of here!" <laughs> but the fact that there was children who organized it, and organized it, yeah. shoving them back, and in. they were just like shoving it, you can't get out. Like, and teachers just let it happen, yeah, for a whole week. Oh That's my insane. god! Yeah. Uh, Lowell, Lowell Elementary School. Not to Is out that any. Utah? I forgot. Wa- wa- Wisconsin. That's right. Wisconsin. Washa, Wisconsin. Mm. Yep. I had a I, I had a very big moment this week. What happened? That I haven't really shared with anyone. I feel like it's okay to share, but I feel like we'll find out. Yeah, I, I hope it's okay. <laughs> um, I saw Brad Pitt. You did. I did. And oh, at the premiere. You go no, to the premiere. I saw him at Pache. Oh, the restaurant. Yeah. We we a cute little Italian restaurant in the amazing. middle of the canyon. Yeah, it's uh like right next to a convenience store. It's yeah. one of Natalie and I's favorites. We go all the time. It's amazing if you're looking for uh, if you're in LA. You have, I'm it's sure. very romantic. It's very romantic. It's a little mm-hmm. sceny. Yeah. You know, it's not that. It's like it's not that. Well, sometimes you see Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Yeah. But it, or was Nick Vial. Was yeah. he on a date? No. Well, I I saw him briefly. Okay. So and f- so for me this was a big deal because. Yeah. I never get starstruck very easily. You know, I've been in LA for a while. I've, yeah. had the, I've met some really cool people. Mm-hmm. I, I've just always been a massive Brad Pitt fan. Oh, he's a handsome fellow. Like I, he's Brad Pitt to me is like one of those celebrities where I like I know he's just another human being. Mm-hmm. I get it, but like, but he's there, a movie star. There's an element of like you're actually real. Yeah. Like you're a real uh-huh. person. Like yeah. for me, it's on that list. It's Brad Pitt, Oprah. I yeah. think like yeah. Oprah to me seems almost that would be a cool. There's sighting. another level of human that yeah. Oprah is like. I, I don't know where I don't know what I would like. Michael Jordan maybe. Uh-huh. Yeah, Brad Pitt. So, anyways, I, we were in that. You know, in the lobby, we, if you've mm-hmm. been to Pache, they have like the that big table, the community table where you yeah. kind of wait, and then they have this little side room. Yeah, we were in that side room on the table. It was yeah. my brother was in town. For some dental convention, so he brought <laughs> nice. his he brought his uh, his dentist buddy, me, Nally, and uh, Jason. Ah, oh, my good friend. Yeah, uh, Jason. <laughs> Got him a glass of wine once. Uh, <laughs> there you go, your friend. And we all went out there, and we were finishing <laughs> we were finishing dinner. Nally went up and got to the bat went to the bathroom. Uh huh. And then she came back, and I look up, and all of a sudden, from the bathroom. Brad Pitt just walks by and walks out. That's a wild. It, it was just sighting. it was just walked and yeah. now I looked up and we're like, Holy. yeah. And I looked at her and I was like, that's. We're both like that was Brad Pitt, <laughs> and he just walked ever. He, and it looked like he glided. It was, oh, it yeah. was the movie star. It was glide. so cool. But then now they realized, wait, I was, I was just in the bathroom, and he was in the. There's two bathrooms, and they're I, I believe they're. Oh, they peed together. Yeah. Well, then that and then. <laughs> And then Natalie made a joke about once we realized she's just like, well, and she was just like, yeah, I mean, I was in the bathroom. With Brad Pitt. Uh-oh. And then and then she kind of made a joke about like, well, you wouldn't care, like because it's Brad Pitt. Right. And to which I quickly replied, well, honestly, I'm, I'm going to play this game. <laughs> For the record, I'm just going to say that pr- I would probably handle it badly if I found out you hooked up with right. Brad Pitt. Because well, in, in L.A., you're like. That anything could happen. Yeah, anything could possible. Anything could happen. But there was that. That I played along and thought, and then she's like, "Well, would you be mad?" And I thought, "Okay, well, I'll play this game." <laughs> and then I thought, "Well, yeah, yeah," because even if I was exploring alternative forms of relationships, where it's like, "Hey, if you get hall right. pass, yeah," but you didn't even introduce me. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you really. Yeah. Got to hook up with Brad Pitt in you, the bathroom. You'd want to at least hang I, out with him. I would have wanted an introduction. Right. I would have been mm. like, hey, babe. Yeah. This is Brad. He's a really cool guy. He's a really cool guy. <laughs> and then I, and then I figured, could I get over? And then you you probably would want a selfie. Yeah. Just, you know, to it was, have was, a memento. I really want, I, yeah. But I got to see him. He was a good tenant. Yeah. He walked right past it was, Did you feel like his like presence came onto you a little bit? Like he, just, like he looked as cool as I thought he would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just yeah. just well because you know there's only a, so many of those movie stars left. They and they've been famous for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I've I've uh, I've seen Leo out. Doesn't mm-hmm. not the same. Not yeah. the same for huh? me. I got well. I'm friends with Rumor Willis, uh-huh. and I got to meet her mom and dad when I met her mom. She was like, 
meeting a friend's mom. So lovely yeah. and so cool. When I met her dad, I was just so fucking weird. Really? <laughs> you know, he was also lovely, but yeah. I don't know if it's like as a guy, you're just like you kind of almost look up to like you you mm -hmm. kind of crush on yeah. mm -hmm. you know, certain like male celebrities is like, oh, you're cool when I was a kid. Right. And I remember just getting weird around him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I was surprised because uh -huh. like I've always been a fan of Bruce Willis, but yeah. I don't remember like I've always I've known I'm a fan of Brad Pitt. Like right. I've always just and yeah how does your weirdness manifest what did you do i didn't oh i just well he just walked out oh. i don't know what no no I, oh. no with with the oh, Bruce. well it was at rumor's birthday party and i just avoided him oh really oh. so like there was i went, got shy i went into the kitchen and uh -huh. he was standing you know and there's it's a nice house and so uh -huh. he was standing in one entryway which uh -huh. was the clear shorter path to where i wanted to go <laughs> right and i was like I don't know how to navigate this. I don't want to say excuse me, <laughs> and I don't want to inconvenience him, uh -huh. which would have been like. So I'll just take the long way I'll around. Take the long way. <laughs> so I did that <laughs> mm -hmm. and just kind of avoided him. Oh, um, but he was very lovely and very nice. I just got weird yeah. and starstruck around him. But yeah. I saw Brad Pitt. Is there anyone that would just floor you, or yeah. someone that you've that you got to meet that it almost felt surreal? I mean, the opposite. I mean. The connection is there. His ex-wife, uh, okay. Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was very starstruck meeting her. I would her. be starstruck meeting her. Yeah. The first time I met her was at uh, Chelsea Handler's Thanksgiving. It was like, I want to say 2011 oh, or so 12. So you were just like spending the holidays with Jeff. Yeah, I didn't know though. Wow. I walked in and there she was with her boyfriend at the time, Justin Thoreau, who eventually she married. And... uh no, everyone was too nervous to sit beside her, <laughs> and it was the only seat left. Uh, and I was like, "Well, on I I'm guess, gonna do it. I guess I'm gonna take this seat." And Chelsea went, "Oh my god!" And I was like, "I'm fine." <laughs> and I was, I was weird, you know. She, she was like, uh, uh, "We just like made chit chat, made chit chat." See, I'm, <laughs> See, I'm getting yeah. nervous. Even thinking nervous. about yeah. it is nerve wracking. <laughs> what was we the made weirdest small talk? Was there a question you asked where you thought immediately thought that was stupid, stupid oh, portion? Yeah. Why did I? <laughs> she goes, uh, she goes, I, I, I don't remember. We were talking about the meal, and she goes, "I made the Greek salad," and I was like, "I love salad." <laughs> I really love salad. Like very, like clearly, I don't eat a lot of salad. <laughs> I just can't stop talking about her salad. Like, why did you lie about <laughs> the that? Best Greek yeah. salad I've ever had in my life. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but she was so nice and so cool. She has an aura about her mm -hmm. too. And then I got to film with her a couple of years later. But I still felt that way when I met her That's a couple great. years later. Yeah. Yeah. There is. There's. There's fewer. Fewer of these like types of yeah. celebrities where it feels mm -hmm. truly like. I can't believe yeah. you're here and yeah. you're like a real person. But uh -huh. Yeah, I think Oprah would be on my list. Yeah, too. Oprah's always been on my list. That would be someone I would just like really love to get to just sit down and even just hear her in a conversation with other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if I was a weirdo and just observing. It, yeah. 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 Well, I got to meet Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds was up there for me too. Yeah. That yeah. was a big moment He's for He was charming. I've never yeah. met him. He was very lovely. Mm -hmm. He was very charming. Yeah, it was a big couple of weeks for me in terms of like Ryan Reynolds and Brad Pitt were def are, are are my Mount Rushmore of like who you want to meet for men yeah. men that I've been like man crushes man crushes my celebrity <laughs> man crushes were probably those two yeah and, uh, and they, I didn't I didn't meet Brad I got I just saw Brad saw him we were at dinner at the same restaurant yeah. we like we like the same food yeah we should basically you are hang Brad out. Pitt we should, we should hang out yeah he goes to meet like stand up shows and i'm always shocked he seems by like that. a regular guy yeah that's if anyways if you're out there brad shout out if um shout out brad. You be friends if, you're, if you need a friend <laughs> my schedule lonely. is clear i'm super normal yeah i'm uh i can relate mm -hmm. no i can't relate to you but it was a lot of fun that's great i'm happy for you yeah. i don't know i yeah. felt like i just getting that out there yeah. yeah do you have a celebrity who would who's your surrealness ellie I, I would like to interact with Taylor Swift. She was, uh, mm -hmm. I've seen her from a distance. Um, our siblings graduated Notre Dame together. So she was like three rows ahead of me at graduation. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was as close as I got. I went to, a, I was at a wedding that she was at. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. And then she gave me a ride home. With wow. Security. Oh, really? <laughs> Not, it was, I, I, we have a mutual friend. I see. And through the mutual friend. Yeah. Very lovely. Yeah. Very, lovely, lovely. I had, a, I had a ride home once with Charlize Theron. 
but also through Chelsea. <laughs> Oh, Chelsea's making these connects. <laughs> yeah. I know. I was like very nervous. We in need that to car. hang out with Chelsea. I now. know. Yeah, she's she's hooking with up. everybody. Yeah. I, I saw Chelsea at Felix once. Mm. Now, I mean, for me, it was I don't. I've never met Chelsea. Yeah. I just remember. Oh, Chelsea. Yeah. yeah, she's got. Yeah, she's got a lot of random friends that I. I don't have those encounters as much these days because she's always on the road. But yeah, when I was working for her, I would end up in random cars with people. That's amazing. I want to end up in random cars with people. Right? That's a nice <laughs> phase of life. Mm-hmm. You've made it. <laughs> yeah. Listen, ZocTalk is one of those features that I don't know why everyone just doesn't have. There's no reason not to have ZocDoc. If you're one of the few people out there that's had your like family doctor in your family forever, great. Congratulations. But for everyone else there on the move, moving uh, to a new city, a new location, sometimes things come up and you need to find a doctor. And ZocDoc is helping people do that because they're helping people find doctors within uh, the time in which you need doctors. They have patient uh, reviews for the doctors and doctors that fit with your insurance. It's a free app. You go on there, you put in the what you need, and then bam, they will give you a bunch of options of what you're looking for. I had a friend who told me they were interested in finally trying therapy. The first thing I did literally was go to ZocDoc, type in their health insurance plan, because in addition to primary care doctors, dentists, they also have mental health professionals. They really cover the gambit of every health appointment you can need to book, and it's free, and it's amazing. Yeah. They'll do the booking for you. Like, it's just like... It's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah. Chances are there's people listening to this show. You've been putting off going to the doctor. You've been putting off going to the dentist. You've been putting off getting your eyes checked. Whatever it is, just go to ZocTalk. Find a doctor available. Make an appointment. Your insurance will cover it. It'll be super easy, and you'll be glad you did. And you'll thought, that was a lot easier. Why did I put this off? And you'll feel like good about yourself, like you accomplished something. You took care of yourself. You invested in yourself. All because you decided to use a free app called ZocDoc. With ZocDoc, booking an appointment with a doctor that suits your needs, fits your schedule, and is in your network and in your neighborhood has never been easier. Go to ZocDoc.com slash V-I-A-L-L to download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search from a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's C-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. ZocDoc.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Ooh, Wondery Even the Rich is at it again, and this time it's Whitney Houston, the legend uh, that graced us with such amazing music and a wonderful acting like The Bodyguard with Kevin Costner. I mean, she was such a legend and, and also just sort of a tragic story, uh, the life of Whitney Houston, but certainly a fascinating one and one you're certainly going to want to hear all about. Even the Rich is a podcast for Wondery that tells the jaw-dropping stories about the tumultuous lives of the world's elite, from the greatest family dynasties to pop culture superstars. The newest season, Whitney Houston. She was uh, stunning, her voice angelic, described as a -a once-in-a-generation talent. She felt trapped between two worlds. She meant something different to everyone, every fan. As the pressure mounted, drugs became her only respite. But soon enough, addiction took control and stole her from the world decades before her time. Even the Rich chronicles Whitney's rise to pop prominence and her infamous fall from grace, revealing the lesser-known stories behind Whitney's demise. Follow Even the Rich wherever you get your podcast, and you can listen ad-free on Amazon Music or Wondery app. Uh, what do we have uh, on the docket, Allie? To, to Should we start with a little over? bachelor conversation? Sure. Bachelor. Did you see Kaylin's post on Instagram about her and Dean? I feel like they've been talking about their engagement and like the ring getting lost and then him proposing, but she got him a truck. she proposed now? Yeah. So she said, according to Dean, we're now officially engaged. A while ago, we agreed we would both propose to each other. I had a lot of ideas of how I would do it, but after Dean had me conquer my fear of heights before his proposal, remember that awful hike he made her go on? Yeah, Dean Dean made her go on like a 20-mile hike. That's not nice. She cried right before they got... Got oh, engaged. And she probably didn't so, look, you don't look great after it. I mean, I've never been yeah. on a 20 mile hike. Let's Such just, a Dean thing yeah. to do. But she uh, said that she thought it'd be fitting for him to conquer his fear, horses. Oh. Okay. So she made him get on a horse. He's afraid of horses. I guess. Oh. And then she proposed to him. So I guess now that they've both done it, they're officially engaged. Okay. I feel like you're engaged before you've both. Everyone yeah. has their own ceremony, right? Okay. I mean, yeah. I'm fine with people deciding yeah. what 
what engagement means to them. Yeah. But as someone who's you know been engaged a few been times and having not, times. not work out, I'm <laughs> yeah. fine with you know coming up with something new to make it you different. know unique and special. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think Natalie plans on proposing to me. Yeah, she I mean it, it's completely fine if that. she does. I just am like, oh, what she... were you saying up until this point? Like with Kaylin having a ring on her finger, mm-hmm. were you not technically engaged? Half engaged. Half engaged. And God, he doesn't strike me as a type that would be afraid of horses. No, he yeah. seems like the guy that would do like anything any, outdoors, any outdoorsy thing. Yeah, yeah. but they kind of march to the beat of their own drum. That they do, you know. Yeah, they they like travel around in a van. Are they still doing that? Living out. I of think they they, I, they I think have he still a house. Has his oh, they van. have a house. Yeah, they okay. have a house in Vegas. Mm-hmm. And I, uh-huh. Yeah, and I I know he has his van, and they're very they're often traveling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I like she, she, I like them together. Oh, they're great. I, we they're they're good friends. Yeah. I love you think them. he'll be at the wedding? I hope so. Okay, Taylor Swift can give you a ride. There you go. Maybe Taylor can give me a ride. <laughs> yeah, perfect. See if Taylor wants to go. Yeah, but they they also strike me. This is a type that will not rush to get married. That's true. I think they'll be engaged for a while. Don't you think? That wouldn't surprise me if it were to be a long engagement. Yeah, but also I've when it comes in, nothing surprises me. So mm-hmm. if I found out they were already married, mm-hmm. that wouldn't surprise me. They would like jump out of a plane together and have an officiant yeah. in the marry sky. Them in the sky. Yeah. I yeah. can picture Kaylin wanting a more traditional wedding. Mm-hmm. And I can picture Dean not accommodating that. But oh. yeah, I can picture Dean not wanting a traditional wedding. Maybe either. they'll do like a little bit of both. Like he'll get the courthouse and then maybe yeah, we'll they'll plan something bigger for her. Yeah. Have all the we had two engagements, folks. so maybe we'll have two weddings. Mm-hmm. That's each do expensive. it their own way. Yeah. When it, it seems like a whenever bachelor people get married is pretty fun because a lot of a lot of you guys I like, have a great time reunite. It's, yeah, it is fun. You know, yeah. it, it's anything to get family uh, family or fr- friends together. I mm-hmm. think especially now, you know, a lot of us have been off the show for a while and we're doing our own thing and have our own lives. Yeah. And so a lot, you know, it's it's, it's a, a good it's a little reunion. So it's nice. So yeah, yeah. We'll uh, Romeo and Kira are no longer. I didn't. I didn't know they were a thing. I guess. I mean, yeah. I heard a rumor that they weren't ever really together. Like it was basically for the show and like the reunion. But remember, they had the whole like handcuff thing at the reunion of like you left this at my place. But Kira posted on her Instagram story saying, "Romeo and I have gone our separate ways. Sometimes you shouldn't give people a second chance to disappoint you." That's wow. not seemed like an unnecessary yeah, comment dig. at the end. Yeah. yeah. It's like, isn't that implied in the breakup? Yeah. Yeah, I used to be a religious watcher of the show, and then I started filming. I was gone in Toronto for six months and didn't see any TV. You, you can pick then, right back up. Now I haven't mm-hmm. watched yeah. in a minute. No, well, yeah. Zach is about to be The Bachelor. Oh, really? Okay. You know, his uh-huh. his uncle's Putty. Yeah? So Zach, the current Bachelor, yeah. Putty from Seinfeld, oh. is his nephew. Oh, funny. He made an appearance at Hometowns. That's hilarious. Yeah. So All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also... Chris Harrison is starting a podcast. He is. Yeah. He announced on Instagram. Just this morning. It's called The yes. Harrison Files. It's called what? The Most <laughs> Dramatic Podcast Ever. I'm shocked by this title. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a Bachelor title. Yeah. Right. It's And you would think he would I would think he would have a bad taste in his mouth for that. I would just think he would want to do something different. Uh-huh. I mean, certainly it was a Huge part of his life for so long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What did he? Any? He, what did he post? Read. Read his post. Yeah. So Chris Harrison is back and he's ready to tell all as the host and executive producer of his new weekly iHeart podcast, premiering on January 9th. It's basically just a descriptor of how he was always the voice of reason on all things love and relationships, from fantasy suites to dumpster fires. He's seen it all, and now he's bringing it to you with the most dramatic podcast ever with Chris Harrison. Fans can expect to hear Chris open up like never before. Using his unparalleled experience, he will dig into all things relationships every week. Fans mm-hmm. will no longer just be going along for the ride. They'll be up close and personal with Chris as he navigates through dating, marriage, love, loss, and more. For the first time ever, Chris will discuss everything, and there's no telling what he will have to say. Okay. So do we think that Chris is going to really tell all? Like, do you think he's going to be spilling tea about... Like, I would think yet. He- they, they have would, an NDA, no? I would. I, I don't know. They do have a strong NDA mm-hmm. when it comes to that. And I think it's like, I think like the producers of the show have like a 10 year and like a, it's like a 10 year mm. so something. He, so he could talk about things from the first eight seasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, yeah, I don't know. I, 
And, you know, it sounds like it's going to be we, focused more on relationships, relationships than anything. And then him what going, he, well, he, in my he, experience. Yeah. He called it a tell-all. Do you, is it more of a tell-all about him or do you think it's going to be a tell-all about us? Like me and like the cast. Yeah. Like is it going to be is norm, gonna, is, normal relationships? Is he going to give commentary about like. Zach's season or just like love lives? No, I don't think like Zach's season. It's more like, you know. Like the like Caitlyn and Nick drama from her season, mm. like oh, what he like the decisions that went down mm-hmm. behind closed doors. I am curious what his show will be about. It sounds from the description that it's gonna be a relationship podcast, but they're to catch people's eye for the announcement. Yeah. It's a he's gonna spill it all. Mm-hmm. But it is. I, I but I feel like the podcast will be like. Uh, talking about relationships and then like dipping back into yeah, like, like what happened on the show what yeah. happened afterward let's so analyze like, files. like uh he's coming for your job <laughs> he's coming for it. i said the harrison he's coming, files. He's coming for me <laughs> yeah instead of the most dramatic podcast the harrison files because he'll be like oh this is that's an interesting thing that's happening in that relationship it reminds, reminds me, me of, of the season yeah desiree seven yeah. when yeah the most that do you think do you think it's a, called the most dramatic dramatic podcast mm-hmm. ever i'm guessing he probably feels like he coined the phrase the most dramatic season ever yeah you know because like every season it became like this kind of running joke you know, this season's the yeah most. yeah he must uh maybe i mean that must be why mm-hmm. that's just how people know him yeah yeah didn't he start out on hgtv before the bachelor Oh, my dad's. He was also a sports he, commentator. Yeah. He was like a. He was like a. Chris Harrison. Like a local news. HGTV. Mm-hmm. I've only known him from The Bachelor. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, for yeah. so long. Yeah. Chris Harrison perfected his hosting duties on Designers Challenge, an HGTV show where three design teams competed. And I was on a plane with him once. You were? So was someone yeah. else I know. He's on a lot of planes with people. Sure, I took a what? picture of him and he saw me take a picture of him and I was like, and then you, I like, you got I was like, caught hi. taking a picture of Chris Harrison? <laughs> yeah. I was like, hi. How long ago was this? <laughs> oh God, that would have been like seven years ago. It was a long time. <laughs> I was going to a show and I thought it was just funny. Yeah. That's you so know, great. content, baby. Content, get it up. <laughs> he was looking at me like, you could have just, Ass. Ass. Yeah. <laughs> and I get it. I've had that happen too. No, I, I told, I'm, I'm with him on that. Where it's just, <laughs> just like, like come I'd, up. I'd have taken a picture yeah. with you, but now I don't know what. I'm, I'm probably going. Yeah. With that picture because yeah. they, I always seem like they get you uh-huh. right when you're giving that kind of what are you doing, uh-huh. you know, look in your face, and I feel like there's yeah, a bunch kind of like you're in Natalie's paparazzi shots <laughs> at your house. Yeah, you just look grumpy and uh-huh. kind of confused. I feel like there's a yeah. lot of pictures out there of, that people have taken taken of me when they yeah. kind of did the whole like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, you know, thing. Yeah, for sure. I think I posted it and he commented on it. He was a good sport. Yeah. Yeah. I was at a party this week and, and um, someone came up to me and, and gave me notes on my show. That was oh. fun. Oh, yeah. what were the notes? <laughs> You're like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I just said, thank you for the advice. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 That is a weird, uh, that's a weird flex for someone to. Yeah. I've got notes for you. Did they have the credentials to be offering notes? I don't. They They told me that they didn't think I should have Victoria and Greg on my podcast because I'm friends with them. Oh. They're like, you should have had someone else should have done it. And I just said, thanks. What I wanted to say is that well, was like the 10th most listened to episode in the world at one point during that week. And people seem to like it. There you go. But <laughs> thanks. I just said, thanks for the advice. Yeah. 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 But like it was that. always like, hey, I want to tell you something. And uh-huh. you can tell me. If you don't want me to say, and at what point I'm just like, well, what do you got? What do yeah, you got? I mean, yeah. You're like, you've already started. You're, you're already there. Uh-huh. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I have to listen to right. now because <laughs> there's no way I can get out of this without. I don't know if you want my advice, but yeah. you're going to give I'm gonna it to give me. It. So I'm just going to try to <laughs> right. sound like a really nice person at this point. But Sounds like other people disagree with his advice. They, they enjoyed it. I, yeah, I mean, well, the point is, I, I just like that people had opinions about it. Yeah. That's all, and that people listened. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's a, <laughs> you know, I, pr- I appreciate them listening. Yeah, That's there all you that go. Really, really matters. When it comes to choosing a wireless plan, you're forced to compromise. But what if you didn't have to? What if you could get reliable service without a contract and save money? Introducing Total by Verizon, a new no-contract, no-credit-check carrier for you. 
and your family with plans starting at just $30 per month on America's most reliable 5G network. Sacrifice nothing, experience everything. Total by Verizon is available at totalbyverizon.com and at retailers nationwide. Based on first place rankings and Root Metrics first half 2022 5G assessments of 125 metros. Experiences vary, not an endorsement. Well, are we done with Bachelor? Yeah, it's That's, been kind of a slow week. A slow week for the off season. You know? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're getting the year to wrapping down the when year. When does Chris podcast start? Uh, January 9th. Okay. Oh, it's coming around the corner. Yeah. So a couple weeks before Bachelor starts. Well, congratulations, Chris. I hope it goes very well. Yes. Let's dive into a little pop culture. Let's do it. Pop culture. All right. So Britney Spears posted some now deleted, not safe for work photos on mm. Instagram. Uh, she posted them on the 15th. And everyone, I, fans are very invested. Obviously, we yeah. all know about her conservative. Con, I can't ever say it. Conservatorship. Conservatorship. Yeah. So everyone is saying, you know, like, where are these photos coming from? Is she posting them? Did she want to post them? Is someone else posting on? Like, I just feel like there's a lot of voices in yeah. any conversation about Britney. Her husband actually spoke out about it and said the only person in the world that gets bullied for posting things like this, like basically only Britney would get all this feedback. He said, I personally preferred she never posted these, but who am I to control someone that's been under a microscope and been controlled for most of her who life? Said that? Her husband. Okay. So he's kind of like, I don't need to see your body all over the internet, but like pop off queen. It's your life yeah, and you've sense. been controlled and now you're not being controlled. Yeah. So that's kind of implying, you know, this was her decision. She's doing mm -hmm. her living her life. Perez Hilton kind of commented about it. He implied that he's been talking to someone like close to the situation that he trusts. And he says that person was saying that things are really bad. Yeah, I saw that TikTok. He it was a very cryptic. Yeah. Things are really bad with Brittany. Yeah. It was like, really? yeah, but didn't did, go into detail. He kind of did this TikTok that came across as like, he couldn't like he chose not to edit in a way mm -hmm. where he was like, I'm, I'm fucking up. I don't know how to say this. And he left yeah. that all in there as like a way to like almost display, humanize. like humanize how he's really struggling, how to uh -huh. portray this message. But the tone of the message was, I know someone very well who I do trust, uh -huh. who seems to know more about the situation than other people know. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's it's not good. Mm -hmm. huh. Like. Like he implied or even kind of strongly said that like Brittany doesn't seem to be in a safe environment. Was he, the, oh. he also said, too, that, you know, because all these fan theories are popping up of yeah. what's actually going on. He said that he's been tagged in a bunch of different videos about theories about why these are happening. But then he also mentioned that he hasn't been tagged in one that's correct. So clearly, like, I don't know. He clearly oh. knows more than he's letting on, but he's leaving it intentionally vague. And it's also Perez Hilton. Yeah. So yeah. who, you know, he's. Right. Part of the kind mm -hmm. of he's created stories in the past. And yeah, so. But there was one fan theory. I think you sent it was someone who was a diehard Britney fan posted a TikTok commenting, you know, she has mentioned in the past that she has bipolar disorder. But this fan's theory was maybe she then also has a dissociative identity disorder in which there are basically multiple Britneys. Uh, as Brittany said, she has bipolar disorder. Yes. Okay. I didn't know yes. that. I didn't know that. But in either. the TikTok that I watched that you sent, I believe it was referenced in either 2012 or 2013 that Why? she oh. has bipolar disorder. If that's the case, I feel like you know these people who say they suffer from bipolar disorder, like it's a really serious condition yeah. that mm -hmm. people can really struggle with. And if you're not prop, I don't know a lot about it. So if I'm right. saying anything that's incorrect, please correct me. But I, my understanding is. You know, you th th they can treat it. You take medication for it, but if you aren't consistent with your medication, you you can have it's like a episodes like or, man or manic, episodes. You know, manic episodes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And boy, if if nothing else, because I feel like sometimes we will hear this diagnosis and then almost like can forget about it. Right. And then when we and then when these celebrities like Britney when do something that seems like off, off or we're not sure. We're, we're, I think we like it's like we want to forget that diagnosis almost mm -hmm. and just critique as if they're like a normal, healthy human being and then question their judgment as like a as a normal, healthy human being rather than someone who's suffering from a potential serious condition. Mm -hmm. There's so much mystery around her in a way that's like you don't you, you so just bizarre. don't know anything. I mean, the conservatorship in general was yeah nuts. Well, yeah. that was such a mystery because she was being controlled, and now 
the assumption is that those people are gone, mm -hmm. uh, but then there's so much that's still very cryptic. Yeah, she. Had, I found this quote from her. It says, I turn into this different person, seriously bipolar disorder. So this theory on TikTok was saying, you know, maybe if she has these different personalities or feels like she has like two different versions of her and mm -hmm. this fan had cited different interviews and different moments of her life where she had different voices and acted very differently then the theory was okay well then maybe these posts are coming from kind of a different side of britney than mm. other like yeah if she's dealing sure. with maybe it's her bipolar side yeah I, I don't love it when fans die you know when yeah. other people are diagnosing mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. people yeah. through the outside because couldn't couldn't her bipolar di diagnosis that she has her own self put out there mm -hmm. be an explanation for all of this behavior? Mm -hmm. or, yeah. or she could have just posted photos. And I feel like that's kind of what her husband was talking about. Yeah, like, like only she would have this much reaction. Yeah, like, I'm not even talking about the photos. Ish, yeah. I'm not talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. The, whatever Perez Hilton is right. claiming is going yeah. on. But you're right. Because yeah. like maybe yeah. she just fucking wanted to feel sexy and yeah. wanted to post some shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, she looks good. Kim's over here posting probably the same content, posting nudes and all this other stuff that are artfully blurred out. And everyone's like, yes, queen, pop off. <laughs> pop yeah, I mean, off. I, think, I think it's just more <laughs> like, yeah. Well, there, yeah, everyone weighs in on her so crazily. I think it's like Britney's content does, like Kim's content, even if it's naked, it there was like a team involved. It's beautiful. There's an artistic approach to mm -hmm. it. Brittany looked like she woke up and was just like, you know what? I'm going to take a mirror I'm selfie. I'm going to take my clothes off. You know, and I'm just going to throw it up there. Yeah. And I think that even image almost looks like, well, was this well thought out? Did she, is she mm -hmm. going to regret it? Because it would seem, it seemed like a reactive decision uh -huh. rather than a planned decision. Mm -hmm. Where like with Kim. It seems curated. Very curated, very yeah. strategic, very planned. So whether you agree or disagree with it, no one's claiming that she is doing it against her will. Is doing against her will or isn't mentally healthy or anything yeah. like that. Where with Brittany, you know, with these with this diagnosis and the conservatorship, there yeah. o there's always that kind of, you know, oh, is, is she okay? Is something going is on? Is something going yeah. on? But hopefully she's doing okay. I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, how much are we valuing like the Perez Hilton statement not, of things are not Nothing against Perez, well, no, I don't yeah. really know, I hope but that like she's I, okay. He per, I I will say I watched his TikTok. He seemed like he wasn't trying to start something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know the guy and it's hard to, you know, once you're in that business. I mean, I guess you could say this, you know, on this show we talk about stories and Every once in a while, I'll reference something I've heard, but I don't want to like you know mm -hmm. give someone away. Mm -hmm. And then obviously we have a show, and we want to get people to listen. Mm -hmm. So you you you're gonna have people question the authenticity once you're kind of in that scene, I suppose, and, and talking mm -hmm. about pop culture. So, yeah. but he seemed like he wished Britney well and was hoping for the best for her. Yeah whatever he's hearing yeah mm -hmm. i didn't get the impression he was making that up it's just the question is who is the source and how credible is the source mm -hmm. he just said he believed the source yeah but yeah how do we know you know yeah we hope you're okay Brittany. yeah mm -hmm. and i did i did double check the bipolar uh comment that the user was making and it was the same kind of quote that i mentioned in her 2013 mm -hmm. i am Brittany jean but like offhanded i turn into a different person like bipolar disorder. I don't think she fully said I have been diagnosed, but it was oh. this kind of throwing it oh, out there. I become this different person, like seriously bipolar disorder. Oh, okay. So, okay, so we don't. Yeah. She also has said she suffers from panic attacks, so definitely mental health is mm -hmm. a struggle. A struggle. Mm. We hope that she's better. Um, but yes, do we want to get into uh Twitch's passing? Unfortunate <sighs> passing. I mean, other than it's heartbreaking. Yeah. So sad. Oh my god. Do you gosh. get the pleasure of meeting Twitch? Um, I met his wife a couple times and she's so awesome. I've never, I never met Twitch. We followed each other online. And so, um, I would see, you know, his videos and again, how happy he yeah. seemed and I what to, light he yeah. brought. I met him a couple times briefly. Mm -hmm. I didn't really get to know him very well. Yeah. I, and I met his wife, mm -hmm. um, a few times as well, but yeah. I mean, it's devastating. Yeah. It's it really one of those is. things that you just can't really wrap your head around. You really can't. And I guess if nothing else, it's just a reminder that you just, you know, we always just have to be careful how we interact with people um, because um, we don't know what they're going through kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we 
you never want to be the trigger that sends someone into a darker place. Mm -hmm. But it's truly devastating. I mean, yeah, I th yeah. There's just again another thing of so much mystery. What happened? You know, there was a he's, he left a note. I heard. Yeah. Yeah, I think that team he said left. That. He left a note. I hate that I want to know what's in the note. I, I feel. Well, I, th I mean, you know, I think that's probably because people are more of like, he seems so happy. How did that happen? You know what I mean? I think yeah. it's more of like all these people have so many questions. You know, yeah, his kids and his family. I guess the uh, the message contained vague references to issues had he'd been dealing with. So issues, challenges. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it brought up, you know, the mental health talk again and there's this been a lot of people posting about suicide prevention which is good there's a number that people can call yeah. you know mm -hmm. if they're feeling that way uh because you know it brought up a lot for for people mm -hmm. I, you know a lot of people were like it made them go whoa and i also just feel like especially the stuff we've been covering not only with twitch and obviously Brittany, and we've been talking about the harry and megan documentary like it's just such a great reminder especially this time of year to check in on people even the people who seem the most full of life and happy and perfect because even as we saw with megan like that interview where someone just asked are you okay mm -hmm. rarely do people do that yeah yeah i mean a lot of people were saying that you know he was this, a lot of people that worked with him were saying mm -hmm. he was the strong one the one that everybody went to for help and advice and to feel good yeah and uh, but no one was being like are you good mm -hmm. yeah you know Oh, it's just heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah. it's so really, really sad. I read something somewhere, some quote, but it was basically like sometimes it's the happiest or the most joking people that are actually dealing with like the worst demons because they put on this, they are the strong one because they know mm -hmm. what it's like to feel alone. Or it could be their coping mechanism. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's like they don't want anyone to feel the way they are. Mm -hmm. So if anything, sometimes people are just able to be such a shoulder to other people. Have you found yeah. that in working in the in comedy space with a lot of people in terms of having a hard time, you know, knowing from a mental health standpoint, people like, have you been surprised to find out people have been struggling when you thought, oh, hey, maybe they're, yeah, this, the jokes are in the room or they're, so, you know, making people laugh all the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, comedians are notorious for, you know, dealing with a lot like of a demons. Darker side, and, yeah. Because yeah, they know how to take pain and turn it into something that, you know, is, uh, joyous that that makes people laugh but if you look at a lot of people's comedy it stems from pain yeah you know and uh and and they like you said cope with it by taking it and turning it into something else something i'm going to take that bad thing and try to make it better but it doesn't necessarily mean they are better or feel better they've mm -hmm. just managed to regurgitate it back out into a more positive light but they're still probably dealing with that thing you know yeah it's very, it's really tricky. And there, you know, uh, people who feel a lot of empathy, people that feel, take on a lot of things mm -hmm. of other people, uh, you know, those people that seem to like, oh, they just know how to make me feel good. I, you know, I've, I, I love talking to them. They're such great listeners. That, that empathy comes from a place of like feeling everything. I feel everyone's pain. I feel the weight of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, uh, it comes with, uh, some yeah, baggage. Heavy, heavy burden yeah. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, we wish certainly um, Allison and mm -hmm. his family nothing but the best. Yeah. And God, it's, it's so hard to. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah, to speak on. Uh, what else we got? Chloe Kardashian and Courtney Kardashian Barker, I believe is her name, hyphen it, did a lie detector test. Have either of you done a lie detector test? I never have. Have you? No. But it's like kind of becoming like an interview thing. It's like a fun thing to add to. I've seen a few celebrities do but it. But like, don't you have to do it with like a professional? I think that there was a person oh, like okay. monitoring it. They were like, asking each other questions. Someone has to know how to read the yes, thing. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. <laughs> and? Uh, I mean, I saw clips. Uh, yeah. So some things popped up, including uh, there was some talk about Courtney and Travis's. You know, they're very into PDA. Sexual they're, couples. Yeah, they're yes. very steamy relationship. <laughs> um, and she and Travis have actually been caught doing the deed in public. Whoa. Which caught? she says she does not regret. But, I could But when you that. say caught... How does how does someone in the Kardashian family get caught and there's no pictures of it? Right? Maybe like caught because the, the devil works like hard, but Chris Jenner works harder. Yeah. Like <laughs> caught the by their family, kids or the like family, family members. She also revealed that they have had sex in character. 
Your character. Your character. <laughs> what kind of character? Uh, no. uh, while dressed as Christian Slater and Patricia Arquette's characters from True Romance. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. I love that for them. Yeah. Uh, they One seem like movies. they do, like, have steamy a steamy situation going on. I think role playing is a great way to yeah. keep things spicy in a relationship. They're clearly very into each other. Yeah. But that's good. If that's the person you're marrying, you want to be into them. Uh, how do you keep the spark alive in your relationship, Fortune? Oh, you know us lesbians. We just keep it real steamy. There's a lot of sharing feelings. <laughs> well, Courtney, Courtney and Cuddling. Travis were caught having sex outside of their home. Oh. So what? maybe you could try that. I mean, caught by who? I, like a gardener, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Someone walked up on them. I'm assuming they have like a gated yeah. house yeah. in a gated community. But you know they have. There's a lot of kids around, so maybe they thought, "Well, we gotta go outside." <laughs> it was uh, like like his pants are at his ankles. Are they fully naked? I don't know. Like what's they're, this? Also, they're also newer, right? How long have they been together? Oh, they got married like recently. Because yeah, my really... wife and I have been together seven years. Courtney, like, you know, at some point you're just like, I'm tired. <laughs> Let's watch Netflix. We, I mean, Natalie and I say that now sometimes. Yeah. It's like, oh, they got married in tomorrow. May yeah. of 2022. Always tomorrow. They're always tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. They May, got married of, in May of 2022. And then they were together that mo- long before that. It was right? pretty yeah. quick. Yeah. yeah. Well, they've been friends for a long time. Right. They were like n- nearby neighbors. neighbors. Yeah. Their kids knew each other. And now, and they're, now just they're having sex outside on. their home. But that is that is kind of like a lot for the people around them. Like you're happy that they're yeah. really into each other. But the, it will show them on that new show of theirs. Yeah. Everyone's like hanging out and they're just like making out well, at the they table. They were on their way to the Met. I watched their Met Gala episode and she was saying, oh, I don't want to screw up my makeup by kissing him. So we're just going to use our tongues. And they're in the middle of like getting dressed and like in a sprinter van and just like fully yeah. licking the yeah, shit I mean, out of each I, other. If, it's uh, a lot. It's, <laughs> I, if I had friends like that, I you know, I'd, I'm glad you're in love. But it's a, it's, a, it's a lot. We don't, don't need wanna, you licking. Yeah, you don't want to like be around and they have a camera crew like filming yeah. them too. Yep. And are are people truly really like that or I don't is know. it a show? Is that is what it you're a saying? Sh- yeah, I mean, to what extent are you needing to constantly to make out like somebody? Mm-hmm. I don't know. And I don't think I, it certainly can mean you're in love, but it's like the people who don't do that. Mm-hmm. I think that's I think that's where people struggle. It's just like just because you make out all the time doesn't mean you're necessarily more in love than the people who don't. don't. Yeah. I agree with that. I agree. You yeah. know, because as much as like I'm very attracted to my girlfriend mm-hmm. and I desire her all the time, like I can behave myself. Yeah. Like in an Uber. Right. You know? <laughs> I don't yeah, have to like put my tongue down or on my front an Uber. lawn, you know, <laughs> like, or yeah. on my way to the Met Gala that I'm not invited to, you know. <laughs> you want to go to the Met? So I do, one hundred percent. It seems oh, like yeah. a really cool, yeah. fun place. And I'm cool. almost maybe certain, Chelsea knows someone who I'm can get us in. I'm almost certain that once I go, <laughs> it will seem like any other party I've been to, and it right. won't be that big of a deal. But it's just uh, such a coveted invitation. Yeah, 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 I get that. Yeah. What would you go as? Well, how would you oh, dress? God. I mean, like, well, well, it depends on the theme. Yeah, it would depend right. on the theme. I couldn't go too crazy because I'm not that type of person, and my and I obviously would be in some sort of suit situation. Not a I would just go tuxedo. Gown. I would just go tuxedo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nice and classic. Yeah, I wouldn't carry an extra head with me like Jared Leto yeah. did. Oh yeah, no, oh, well, that's right. Yeah, suit like this suit style has very much mm-hmm. just remained a classic, and it probably always will be. I hope so. Yeah. No matter what the Met Gala theme is, I don't want to live in a world one. where a tuxedo has gone out of style. Yeah, no. you might just have to put some gloves on or something. Make a sunglasses. Sash. Yeah, uh, add a little sash. something. A sash. <laughs> add a sash. Yeah. From oh, the, 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 the wing. The wing. The the eighties. You used to have the the coattails. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember those weddings. Those were the, popular the back ruffled, in the eighties. Yeah, the ruffled. The ruffled yeah. My dad for my parents' wedding. Yeah, all the coattails? All the groomsmen just had normal coats, but my dad had the tails, so the you tails. knew he was the groom. <laughs> Does he regret it? I don't think so. Because it didn't. That look didn't last. No. Oh. But also, there's not like a ton of photos of his coattails. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But there's the wedding photos. I guess. But I feel like wedding photos were less. Like, there's no wedding photos of my parents around our house. Uh, I feel like that's become a bigger thing. Yeah. Like maybe. now that my sister just got married, we're my getting them printed have, on giant things. Really nice, yeah. oh, wait, no, my parents have a nice photo of them at my uncle and aunt's wedding. Okay. Mm. It's not their wedding. Fascinating. Yeah. 
Do you watch uh, superhero movies? Do you know anything about the superhero world? Not a lot. Oh, okay. that, that has been going on. The Rock is kind of getting called out. Oh, what's happening? That was I not actually, the direction I was going in, but let's dive I know, in. Oh, you, what like, direction were you going I was going to go with uh, uh, Henry Cavill. Oh, Cavill? I didn't see that. That's the same drama. Oh, same drama. That's the same great, drama. Great, great. Yeah. Glad oh, yeah. we're diving I, in. I've gotten, I found myself on 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 comic book, comic book mo- mo- movie slash yeah. nerd TikTok, and I say the word nerd affectionately. Because <laughs> well, he's Superman, but they're not bringing him back or something? They're not bringing him back. Yeah. Well, I consider James Gunn a friend. You know, yeah. I've... You know, he's been he's been very nice to me and I've gotten to know him a little bit. So yeah. and I'm also just I've always big fan of his uh, work for Guardians of the Galaxy. I mm-hmm. think he's tremendous. Everything he does, I really enjoy. So I've always been kind of team James Gunn. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was really cool when he got hired to be like he's like the new CEO president of D.C. Mm-hmm. Oh, is he? I didn't yeah. even know. Got, I did like, not know that. A, and it's like a. Well, and then I, I did watch Black Adam for the first time last uh-huh. night. It's not particularly awesome. Oh, really? But like, yeah, the it sounds like The Rock is just like... Oh, the Rock is not happy about that them not bringing him Well, in. what I learned, and I learned this all very recently. So The Black Adam came out. And when The Black Adam was being promoted, obviously it was a big deal. It was like Rock put all of The Rock behind it. Okay. Like he really, you know, this was going to be his baby. And yeah. I think in certain press interviews... He kind of almost cryptically slash suggested that like, you know, there's going to kind of be a new king in town, so to speak. Like oh. if Black Adam really had taken off that like the 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 multi universe, the universe that is going to be the DC world, okay. you know, because like Marvel has their very clean. Everyone is it's so kind of cohesive. Everything yeah. is tied together. And where DC, you got like. All it, these different is it like Justice League, which you have the that? Justice League, but then you have the Joker movies, which are all uh-huh. standalone. They have these like different universes. You have okay. it, you have two Batmans going at the same time. Okay, you know, like Michael Keaton's coming back apparently is the Batman in some movies, and then you have the most recent Batman with um oh what's, um what's his name Robert, Pat- Robert, Robert Patterson. Pat- and then, you know, the Joker had a kind of a cameo in that, but then you know, it's a okay. DC's kind of all over the place, right? Okay. And then like the rock referenced how like there's a new king in town, so to yeah. speak, that like, you know, and he brought in Superman, like uh, Henry Carville at the end. Uh, of his, of that movie? Yeah, and then, so he's like, hey, I'm going to come back as Superman. But, and it was, yeah, like a, I, it was like a power play. He posted on October 24th, this is Henry, that he would be coming back to play Clark Kent, sharing a teaser image on Instagram saying, the image you see in this post and what you saw in Black Adam are just a very small taste of things to come. Yeah. Okay. And but now it, they're saying... It, now that's it's not not back. happening anymore. Yeah, because James Gunn came in and he's going to put his own spin on it. They hired him for a reason, and okay. he's and it it seemed like Rock, with his you know influence and power that obviously he has, was like made the executive decision to bring Henry into his movie mm-hmm. and almost kind of wanted to force the hand of of having a movie with them with him almost. Oh, but it's like the movie flopped. Oh really? Like it it lost money. It didn't do very well. Uh-huh. It wasn't awesome. It wasn't an awesome movie. Okay. I didn't see it clearly. It's like it, it was a big L for The Rock. Yeah, like not only this, but like, yeah, it's like it seemed like he almost wanted to be in a kind of leadership role for DC, like had Black Adam really taken off. I was really I got really invested in this TikTok yeah. last night. But uh And so um did he speak out against the James Gunn thing? No. He said, the changing of the guard is something that happens. I respect that. James and Peter have a universe to build. I wish them and all involved with the new universe the best of luck and the happiest of fortunes. Yeah. And The Rock Thank hasn't you. really said anything either. <laughs> I mean, what can The Rock say? Because, really James, do well. because I did see James said something and he said something about The Rock. Ooh, what did he say about The Rock? I'm sure it was it, all like politically yeah. correct and all nice. Like, but I think like It behind, was something like good things must come to an end or something and something and that it was um the rock was at the end of it according to like the comic book tiktok it really seems like the cons- there's a lot of conspiracy theories of which yeah. i buy where there's like a lot of um a lot of like feelings hurt or mm. or kind of it's like a power play between yeah. who's going to be running dc and What's it seemed the- like the rock wanted to be the in a position where James Gunn finds himself now and maybe had the movie Black Adam done better. Yeah. But what, he kind of lost that 
that uh, ability very, to do that. It's a very lucrative world, yeah. and all eyes are on that world. I mean, those movies do better than m most these most. days. I mean, so many movies are tanking, and the only industry that's really thriving is that action who, world. What uh, would you ever want to play Superhero. a comic book character? Heck yeah. Who who I have no idea. You have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. What do you what but would yeah, you want would, your superpower to be? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Like just very strong. <laughs> just big muscles. Yeah, there you go. Because I I dip my toe in the action world, not the superhero world. Uh I filmed this big action yeah, series the, the wrestling was it wrestling uh no it was a it's a cia tv show for netflix i did it with arnold schwarzenegger is that out yet uh it'll come out sometime in 23 Ooh. so i had never done that world before but it was so fun just explosions you know just well, was every like day with arnold amazing so fun i mean you know he's been in all these huge movies so like you're you're sitting there i'm like shooting weapons beside him going I, I can't you know that was a surreal moment like i've watched him do this in so many movies so you're in a show fighting fighting bad, bad guys. guys with arnold schwarzenegger yeah it was pretty awesome you have truly lived five months in toronto we filmed thanksgiving with jennifer aniston yeah fighting crime with arnold <laughs> so now that i've dipped my toe in that world it made me like Wanna, I'm so more open to do anything that's different. Like I love comedy, clearly. Sure. That's my bread and butter. But if someone gave me the opportunity to do anything in another action thing or any superhero thing, I would do it in a second. Do you think you'd ever you want to tap into more drama? Yeah, I would do that too. Yeah. I, I it it really made me appreciate acting even more and, yeah. and challenge. It was very challenging. I'd never had that many lines in my life to memorize, but I really loved it. Like every day was hard. It was like long days, but I was never bored. What's the name of the show? Are you allowed to say? Don't know if they've signed off on a name yet. Interesting. Yeah. We cannot wait for that to come out. I'm excited. excited. Yeah. Sounds like a really great show. Yeah. I'm very excited for people to see it. And unfortunately, here's the thing with the Henry Car Carvel. Is it Hart Carvel? Uh, mm -hmm. Cavill. Uh, Cavill? He'd C A V I L L. Cavill? 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 He obviously no. made a great. He's very famous. We have no. Yeah, idea. we have no. Who he are you? He looks the part. He's very charming. I've always been a fan. Uh, it seems like a perfect Superman. Uh huh. Uh huh. So I understand why like fans would be upset. So it's like, well, it makes so much sense. But I can't bet against James Gunn and his vision because like what he did with Guardians of the Galaxy in in, in creating that world, it was so great. He took uh, Suicide Squad. And turn that into like, he, he took a shitty first movie and made a really great sequel that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, the spinoff he did with um um oh uh, Margot Robbie's character was no that... it was with um it was with um J uh, John Cena's character oh yeah uh, uh what's his what's Peacemaker I, yeah yeah it's, so, it's a really good series really if you haven't seen it it's really funny uh -huh. it's really good it's like. It's it's like adult humor yeah. comedy. It it has a little like a Deadpool kind of okay. You know, it's like a yeah. it would, it's a it's a TV show, but it would be like rated R in terms of like content. Okay, uh, but really clever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just like what James Gunn does. So yeah. uh, and James would I, trust. I'm not a diehard like comic book stan, and I don't know all the history, all the storylines. Yeah. I'm more of a you know I've seen all the all the movies. I'm like a casual fan, but mm -hmm. like I really. I think James Gunn is going to crush it. And while it seems weird, it's like every time they, like when they uh, like announce Robert Pattinson as Batman, you're like, what? Mm -hmm. Huh? When they, I remember when they announced Keith, uh, Heath Ledger, Keith, Heath Ledger is the Joker way back in the day. And I thought that was weird. Mm -hmm. So like, you never really know like oh, the type Lord. of actors and what, like the, what characters they can evolve. And I think it's kind of exciting to see mm -hmm. them kind of find and develop new talent yeah. and see what they can do with it rather than kind of keep playing, like hanging on to like a character you fell in love with. Definitely. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's going to be exciting. That's a, mo that's the most uh, comic book nerd talk we've done on this show. <laughs> yeah, in a long time. I'm impressed. You kind of just went off. I was like, here we go. I, uh, I, I, I again, I I I like all that stuff. I yeah. watch it all. I'm I've never I didn't grow up reading yeah. comic books, mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't, I can't get into the weeds or nerd out, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. But I I watch the movies and I I yeah. enjoy them. Okay, final question, little mm -hmm. poll of the room, 
Prince William attempted to keep a low profile, but it's Prince William, so I of mean, course impossible. it got out. <laughs> he attended an ex-girlfriend's wedding. Oh. Don't text your ex happy birthday and don't go to their wedding? Or are there exceptions oh, yeah, yeah. to the rules? Uh, well, I mean, if they're chill and they're friends, I'm assuming, like, what kind of ex? Is it like a serious ex? Uh, I mean, he met Kate in college, so really, like, how serious could it have been? Well, um, I don't know. His former college, girlfriend, Rose. He makes some bad decisions in college. Uh, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. So I feel like the like the first question is, did oh, you hook up with Oh, they were childhood them? friends. Oh, okay. Oh. But she attended their wedding. So then and yeah, it, so it was described go. as an innocent, tender romance. Okay. And so they did Like an thought. early. But she was his first serious girlfriend. Yeah. We're how, getting a lot of information. How, yeah. Like, which one is it? Were they like childhood friends? <laughs> is it they, like, tender played? love or is it deep passion? Is yeah. It, yeah. Uh, <laughs> did they fuck or did they just hold hands, you know? It right. It sounds like they grew up together and then at some point it transitioned to a little romance and then quickly. Because first serious girlfriend doesn't mean it was actually serious. Like, serious. Yeah. It could just be like, hey, it was a f my you, first girlfriend. Right. And, like, there's the first. Yeah. And if she came to their wedding, I feel like Kate's I'm guessing good with they didn't it. hook up. I'm guessing it was like more who I don't know. Maybe. The pre the pair previously dated back in the year two thousand okay. and were once rumored to have been caught by a farmer canoodling in a field. I think they <gasps> oh hooked up. Maybe, maybe they did. <laughs> they were canoodling if in I, a field. If I was inviting an ex to my wedding, I'm they? almost they... certain my now Natalie's first question would be Did you canoodle in a did field? You fuck her? Yeah. Yeah. So he met Kate, I guess, in 2003. So Who this is, is a it? few Courtney years. Kardashian? Kardashian? Literally. <laughs> so he was canoodling in the field in 2000. He met Kate in 2003. That's a, yeah, that's, I think it's good. They're fine. That's I don't know. Canoodling? Canoodling in a field, though. That bonds people. I mean, my wife is best friends with one of her exes. It doesn't bother me. Okay. But they were together a long time ago. Yeah. Like, yeah, in that time frame. Too. Do you keep in touch with any of your exes? Not really, no. Any of the cops? <laughs> that, was, that was Jackson's yeah. exes. Um, uh, no, not really. Yeah, I just don't see the. I don't. I won't have any of my exes at your wedding. Yeah, no, none of my exes were at my. Yeah, maybe wedding. that just speaks to like they have. They must have a smaller circle of friends. I would assume so. Yeah, hard, hard to know. You can really trust. Trust. I feel like it's probably similar to how like. Uh, really famous athletes typically end up with high school sweethearts or someone who knew them in their childhood. Like, it makes sense to me that his first serious girlfriend was mm -hmm. someone he grew up with. Yeah. Because your circle's yeah. probably really small. You're not going to take a risk on yeah. a rando. You're not yeah. going to canoodle, which is anyone. You're not. He's probably, I'm, I'm like, guessing going to the it, club. I'm, I'm guessing yeah. they didn't hook up. I bet they canoodled. They canoodled in a field. There I was bet, some heavy petting. I bet they hooked up. I bet they hooked up. Yeah. Like sex. You think he there was, was sex? probably yeah. like 18 or not. Well, because it, it, it was 22 years ago and he's... 40 he was yeah he was, he was like, like 18. 18 they probably hooked up they probably at least did some hand stuff <laughs> some handies <laughs> in the field and she was at the wedding some booby hand mm -hmm. stuff <laughs> <laughs> booby hand stuff booby, booby hand stuff <laughs> as i would call it the penis. Uh, uh, it's always in a uh, yeah i think the first time i did any stuff it was in the woods what i lost my virginity on a hill <laughs> And the first time, yeah, I, it was all always, always outside. Yeah. Why? It's Wisconsin. You had to hide from the parents, the oh rental my. units. On a hill. <laughs> and they were rolling down the hill. Yeah. It was, it was a twist. Like, literally in the woods. We would just, we went and we walked into the wooded area. It was like our hookup spot. No Did ticks. you like put a blanket down? You were just in the dirt. In the dirt. You didn't learn the romance part yet. Ends up with a tick, like Lyme disease yeah. in your butt. <laughs> we just literally just <laughs> lied down in some woods and started. Okay. I don't know what's a better what visual of that or booby, the tunnel. Yeah. Booby hand, stuff. Booby hand stuffed it. Yeah. Booby, booby, hand, booby stuff. hand stuff happened. That's probably what they were doing in the field at yeah. 18. And she won't be at my wedding. No. Mm -hmm. No booby hand that stuff. A long time. I don't, you know. I don't know. All right. Well, it's time for texting office hours. There you Let's go. Uh, give, give some uh, relationship advice. How's it going? Hi. I'm Emma. I'm 28. Hi, Emma. How can we help? My sister is convinced that I should marry her coworker, and I just really am not sure if I should even try or what I should even say to slide into his DMs. Okay. So you're not sure if you even should try to date him. I don't like, it almost sounded yeah, like marriage is a yeah, I don't even couple know, steps. Yeah. So like, <laughs> later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right now, we're, just, we're trying to decide if you should go on a date. Yeah. I'm going to go with don't marry him yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is your answer? So tell me why, you know, 
why is she saying this? Why is she so convinced? Uh, why yeah. are you even considering this? Why, why not, you know, try it out? Like, what's what are your reservations and concerns? Okay. So first, my sister is my best friend in the whole wide world. So, and she knows me better than anybody. And she has never tried to set me up with anybody. So that's why I'm kind of taking this one into consideration. Um, just for context, I have a hard no setting Emma up rule for my family because every time that they have before it has been disastrous mm -hmm. but for my sister she's never tried and she knows me better than anybody so i'm taking this one a little more seriously she thinks that we would be great together because we're both really independent we're both quirky he's a christian i'm a christian just different things like that the only thing is well not the only thing but one of the things is i am currently long distance from home so i don't live where i grew up my sister does and that's where this coworker is um how so far I'm not like really... we're we talking how far of a plane ride or how yeah. far of a drive it's a seven hour drive and right. it would be a two-leg plane ride trip because it's kind of oh um, not, a, not a direct flight it's only Not a seven hour flight. drive, but you have to get on two planes to get there. I know that's weird. That's like a forty five minute regional. Flight. A two hour flight might be a deal breaker for me. A, a two flight <laughs> situation. Yeah, because like yeah. Minneapolis is what five hours from Milwaukee, and that's like a forty five minute. Because I dated my wife long distance, but it was a four hour plane ride. Yeah, one plane. Oh. One plane. Yeah, but, but I couldn't drive to her. It was take yeah. me a really long time to drive to her. So it depends on how much you like car rides. Yeah. See, seven, hour, I also I, I, seven hours is long. Five? Seven hours. Five. Seven hours is like Los Angeles to like Napa Valley. That's seven hours? That's about seven. Okay. Yeah. Because I feel Vegas like. Because LA to Vegas is four. Four is no problem. Yeah. For five. Six, seven. Seven is, is a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. I know. I know. And, and, well, the, and you mean, don't want to be back where you grew up, right? You're good where you are? Um, For now, I'm good where I am. I have like, whenever I moved here where I'm currently at, I was like hell bent and determined that I'm moving home eventually. And I thought it was going to be within the like last five years, but I'm currently where I'm at for the last five, four years. And um, I just got a promotion and a raise at my job. So I don't think I'm going to be going anywhere. I don't think I'm going to be leaving my job anytime soon. But I do eventually want to move home. But mm. that's more of like when I'm settling and having kids. So like 30s. Oh, yeah. Because you're young. You're 28. Yeah. You're not ready for, and, for that stuff yet. But that also kind of leads me to this question of like why I'm here because Nick I did read your book it was really great and I Good have job, suggested Nick. so many people appreciate um, it but I'm really like your thought of holding off and just really hold keeping in mind that you don't know this person for like three months in you know six months in you really kind of still don't know that person that thought process has really integrated into my mind and I've thought about it and that's why I'm kind of like, is this even really worth it? Like it would like, I'm trying to not get too deep into the thought of like, is it worth it? Because I don't know this guy and this could just be fun drinks, that kind of thing. Or is it worth it? Like long distance thing where like, I actually am really looking for somebody that I do want to marry, but you know, is that making any sense? Sorry. Yeah, totally. So you, and, you know, you're, and knowing your note, you said you've been single uh, for two years with zero luck in love. Mm. Two years of being single is not that long of a time. Mm -hmm. You I mean, don't it's all, think it's all, so? Well, it's all relative. I mean, I was... She's ready for booby hand stuff. She's ready for booby hand <laughs> stuff, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying no, I don't know. But, I'm not... I don't think you need to, like, settle down, but I'm kind of like, you know... Why not? Why not go well, meet him? That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, you know, you mentioned like my book, and you could look at it a couple different ways. Like, you know, when I say it takes a, like my whole point of that part of the book was like, listen, it takes a long time to get to know anyone, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. have a we have a tendency early in dating to get really excited about someone, and especially if all the things line up and you live together and you're hanging out all the time, and then like you're you hook up maybe, and it's just easy to get caught up in like the 
it gets the honeymoon phase of it all. But we it takes time to really really get to know someone and build that kind of romantic connection or that romantic bond um, or emotional connection that really makes you understand who someone is and kind of learn about their insecurities and things like that. And mm -hmm. This is an opportunity to maybe get to know someone and, and know that it's going to naturally go slower than it would if he lived in the same town. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, I guess I'm more, like how, how, angsty do you feel about being single okay well wow crazy that you're asking this because well honestly i go back and forth i think probably like a lot of people do but in the last probably six months i have been far more comfortable with it like i actually really am very much enjoying this process that i'm in of being single and discovering my life and discovering who i am and in fact, after I emailed y'all, I was thinking about it the next morning. And I was, well, I wasn't thinking about this, but just being a single in general. And I thought about the question of if you met your partner today, would you actually be ready? And normally when I think about that question, I always think, yes, of course I'm ready. Yeah. But this time I thought, actually, no, I am not ready at all. My life is a whole ass mess. Um, so I don't know what I'm thinking that I could bring a partner into it while it's messy, this messy right now. But well, on the other hand, it is a whole ass potentially mess. just drinks. Yeah. Here's the thing though. But like, I think you're going to come to find that it's never a perfect time or situation. And I think yeah. what's more kind of an honest assessment is my guess is that you went from you know, like early adulthood in your 20s. And I think in early adulthood, we we give ourselves way too much credit because we're just comparing it to being stupid teenagers. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I know so much, I'm so much older, I'm so much wiser, I have so much more money. Yeah. You, Everything you learn is like eye-opening. Mm -hmm. And and every, it's yeah. just like, I, you realize how dumb you were younger, right? Yeah. And I think yeah. now you're maybe just kind of getting into that kind of period of your life where you're just recognizing there's maybe you have a lot to learn and you don't know everything and there's a little bit more humility, I think, just in general. Mm -hmm. I think when yeah. we get to our late 20s, early 30s, I think. And so now instead of, because your 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 letter and the way you talk, and I know you're kind of joking, I feel like it it almost resonated with like younger you, which was like, where your brain's actually like, well, should I go on this date and marry him or should I not? <laughs> right. You know, it's a yes. lot of, you're putting yeah. a lot on it. And I don't think you really have to decide, mm -hmm. you know, and I know there's pressure because your yeah. sister is, is like making it work. And you're just like, well, if I, if I, re if I go f for this guy, we're going to date for four years. I don't know if we're going <laughs> to, you know, like you're, you kind of, I think kind yeah. of told yourself that, or yeah. you know that it's going to, Something's going to happen yeah. and you have to figure out whether it's going to get messy or not. You're maybe comparing it to other setups. But given the fact that you are in this kind of new season, I would say, because the fact that mm -hmm. you say to yourself, I've only, it's been six months since I've really started to appreciate being single. So I would say to you is like, wow, you're just at the beginning of this. So like, don't rush into yeah. maybe like locking something down. But that doesn't mean you should like actively not date or be single. Mm -hmm. Like this is the best time then to date where you're just kind of, you're open, yeah. you're interested, you're not going to like, if you meet someone you get excited about, then you have like the self-awareness to pull back and say, all right, well, I'm mm -hmm. excited, but I have a lot to get to know and I can learn. So yeah, like I don't think there's any much harm in reaching yeah. out to this guy. You're trying to control all the outcomes. Yeah. And you can't. <sighs> See, and it's so funny that y'all are saying this to me because I thought I was doing not that. Like, that's what I always do. And so that was me actively trying to not do that, but I was still doing yeah. it. Well, I mean, listen, it sounds like this is, it's kind of embedded in who you are. And then to a certain extent, yeah. that's just who you are. It's mm -hmm. like a learned behavior. And six months of doing, being a new you, it's still like yeah. you're comparing six months to 28 other years. So, yeah. so true. it's going it, to, it, you know, it's, you're oh, learning new habits. Yeah. Don't put so much pressure on it. And then you could meet him now or you can meet him in a year. I mean, he might not be single, but you don't know. There, There's also no timeline of like, I got to go home for Christmas and we got to have drinks. Yeah. Are and you going home well, for Christmas? Yes, actually. That's in my email. You could have drinks. But like a group thing. It could be, it doesn't have to be like something. Oh, that's a good idea. You could do yeah. that. Yeah, I didn't think about like that. Like your sister, some other coworkers. Yeah. 
doesn't have to be yeah. like this pressure of a one-on-one romantic date. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good idea. I know. Well, in smart. that case, <laughs> <laughs> in that case, should I still slide into his DMs, or should I just coordinate with my sister and make her do it? I think coordinate with the sis. You huh? think so? I don't know about sliding into his DMs. Why not? Because if you're trying to keep it casual, yeah. yeah. I think this. I think your sis should try to plan like a like a group outing. And and they can kind of see naturally if there's chemistry instead of like, hey, should we let's go yeah. on a date, right? I don't know. I don't think that's a bad option. Okay, I'm just weighing all of the. I options. think if they hang out yeah. as a, in a group and she is into them, then she can DM them. Do you think you can be yourself in this group setting, knowing that the setup is on the table? I was gonna say, I think actually, I would prefer to go ahead and just kind of call it out, like. <laughs> Go ahead and put it all out on the all table right. as far as like this thing those DMs. You should, I, uh, Yeah, I, and I don't think if you slide in his DM, it's like, hey, do you want to go on a date? I think you keep it casual. You point out mm-hmm. the fact that clearly you both know your sister is trying to coordinate this. Yeah. He wished you a happy birthday on Facebook. Yeah. Like she probably made him do that. Who knows? You replied back. I Thank you. I don't think so. I don't think she made him. I don't mean made him, but like she probably was just like, it's my sister's birthday. I say if you're oh, going maybe, home, yeah. slide into the DMs then. So what? And, do it. But not, but not fret about what it could happen. Yeah, I think you, I completely agree with Fortune here. You need to really, would it be fair to say in the past that you would uh, over romanticize? Yes. Oh, yeah. 110 percent. All right. So you just have to really be (laughs) mindful of that with this situation. That's what I'm trying to do, especially with what I was talking about earlier. of just trying to remember, like, I don't know this guy. I really do not know this guy. I know what my sister has told me and I know like a few things from social media, but I don't know anything. So but do y'all have any advice on that? Like, how do I you take the try pressure? to stray away from it? Well, I think you need to tell yourself that just because your sister set you up, there's no actual added pressure. Because mm-hmm. I think when it comes to setups, there's this inherent pressure of like, get a report back to sis yeah. or she thinks we're a good match and there's a heightened expectation. What if you don't like that person? Is it going to yeah. be weird or awkward? And the truth is like, who gives yeah. a shit? Like none yeah. of that really... You're supposed to just try different things on. Yeah. Maybe it fits, maybe it doesn't. And the good news is if it doesn't work out, he's seven hours away. There you you go. don't have to ever see him really yeah. or interact with him. Let your sister have the awkward meetings. You don't have to. You're yeah, good. true. <laughs> if so, anything, I, no, I'm just like, kidding. I was listening <laughs> to you and getting to know you a little bit here on this call, it sounds like your biggest challenge is 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 policing yourself to mm-hmm. just slow it, keep things slow, even if it goes well early on Mm -hmm. and allow this distance that you do have to like create a potential relationship or a dynamic with this guy that allows you to maybe like get it, get to know someone in a different way. Cause it can be fun getting Mm -hmm. to know someone via long distance. Oh yeah. Like it's a, it's fun to like have your like text to have your text friend or buddy or FaceTime Mm -hmm. dates and like, and if there is excitement there, there's a build of chemistry and lawning and wanting to visit. Yeah. But if that does happen, you know, just enjoy it and just, you know. Don't put who, pressure yeah, on it. Who knows? Seems like a yeah. handsome enough a handsome handsome enough guy. Yeah. And he sports a mustache <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, come you know? on. <laughs> so, so Which, okay. I have a whole theory about mustaches. Like I never trust a man with a mustache, but he <laughs> does that with uh, a fur charity. So oh, okay. I, uh, That's I know some yeah. really wonderful men who uh, sport a mustache. Yep. So I think, you know, I will. Okay, fine. I will say I'll be fair. It's my personal experiences, but all of my personal experiences have been fuck boys. Every mustache oh, no. has a fuck boy. Oh, well, there's a lot of fuck boys out there. So. Well, but you yeah. said you're a Christian. He's a Christian, right? Yeah, I mean, that does not mean he's not a fuck boy. A lot I know, of but, fuck boys, but, yeah. but here's my advice with you being a Christian. Let go, let God. Whatever happens, <sighs> happens. Okay? I know. It's so hard. You I will say, too, though, it's hard because it's always like wanting to advance it. Being from the South, I mean, Fortune, you know, like you know. I'm already an old maid at 28 for not being married but i'm 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 shifting that mentality for myself also yeah. or at least i'm trying to mm-hmm. yeah how old yeah. is he 30 
Okay. There you go. Nice it's a age. good dating time. Yeah. So I I I think we hit them up. Yep. Okay. Uh, what what home. should we say? What up? Okay. <laughs> What's up, bro? What's up? What's up, mustache? Sup. Hey, you, hey, you got a free mustache rod? No. no, just kidding. Don't do that. That's a fuck boy. Uh, um, I mean, you can be like, a, I, a, a, was, I hear you want to get to I, know me. Oh, wait, what? Oh, there. That's a bold one. I hear you want to. I hear you want to get to know me. I love that. Okay, there you go. I, I hear you've been asking. I was me. thinking. Um, I was thinking something along the lines like, hey, my sister says that we should get married, but I was thinking we should just start with drinks or something like that. I don't think, not the marriage thing. No, 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 not funny. Okay, X. Because he doesn't know your sense of humor yet, you know? That's fair. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, remember what I said in my book, don't try to be a comedian, you know, unless you know it's a fucking like, (laughs) Yeah. you gotta know it, everyone thinks it's funny. Otherwise... Yeah. Get to know each other before you start cracking jokes, you know? Yeah. Okay, that's fair. No Very poems, fair. no jokes. Yeah. Like, More of just like, uh, my, yeah, the, my sister thinks we yeah, should I get, get to know each other yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I mean, truly. Harry, you've been asking about me. Yeah, so, yeah, that's <laughs> playful. It's less uh-huh. of a joke, more playful. And see if I he's playful back. I spicy. That's spicy. spicy. I think it's as spicy as you need to yeah, be. Yeah, I want to get spicier than that. <laughs> I hear you've been asking about me is like a very like bold. Yeah. And also like, yeah, that's all because you can you will already be able to tell about him right off the bat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If he just says some if he kind of yes ands you. Yeah. Which is kind of like, yeah, and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. As opposed to saying, Well, I heard you, you know, like you know. Well, no, no. I mean, she told me we should like if he says no in a way, almost like gets defensive. <laughs> no, not amp, but like you know, red flag. Then that's not somebody you would have a good time with anyway. That just means yeah. that like it means that he. Oh, is, I haven't. Well, it's not chill. He's like, well, no, like she told me to like yeah. call you and like mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pass. That'll be a good barometer. But like so that's do that. an initial barometer to see if he does this kind of like. Some version of if he's playful, great. If he's like, yeah, well, I heard you've been talking about me, all great. But if he's like, well, no, I mean, like she told me to. I mean, hopefully you'd be like, yeah, I hear you're fun, uh, yeah. you know, and then that starts yeah. the conversation. It should be that yeah. simple. And then hopefully you'll get drinks over the holiday. That's what you do. That's yeah. what you do. Yep. Okay. You slide in his DM. I heard you've been asking about me. Mm-hmm. And, and he's, you know, hopefully he says something affirmative, playful, like, yeah, yeah, playful, whatever. And then you say, well, I'm going to be in town right next week, right? Because that's Christmas. Yeah. I'm going to be in town next week. How about we all, group setting, get to drinks and, and invite your sister out? And unless you want to go on a one-on-one date, but I do think, you know, how about we all get together and see what he says, mm-hmm. kind of casual, yeah. and then see if in the meantime he initiates more convo. More conversation between the two of you. But for you, I want you to just wait mm-hmm. and see if he does because knowing that your pattern, you you have a tendency of yeah. jumping into things if you get excited. So let's see if he does and don't there's whether he does or doesn't m- means nothing. Mm-hmm. It really yeah. doesn't mean anything. Because honestly, 100%. waiting till you guys get together in a group setting is a totally normal next step. And like mm-hmm. if he doesn't like decide to like hit you up in between. It doesn't mean he's not in love with you. He doesn't know you. Yeah. You know, and, and (laughs) as a guy, I fucking hate setups. So if he's like, I don't know a lot of guys who like setups either. Mm -hmm. And you seem delightful and beautiful and everything, but like, you know, (laughs) setups from your sister, I would trust even less as a guy, (laughs) Yeah, you know? And like uh, the thing about women, they're so good at gassing up their friends and they're great friends of their friends. And so like, Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, like it's just, it's just as a guy, I'm always like, sure. Yeah. Your friend's great. But you know, I don't know if we're a match. So he might have have hesitation too. the fact that he wished you happy birthday. It sounds like my guess is he thinks you're cute. Yep. And that's Mm -hmm. all he knows about you. And that's a great start. And just mm-hmm. kind of go from there. And then yeah. if you hang out, you see a vibe. When you go back home, just be like, well, listen, I'd love to keep getting to know you. There Let's you like, go. I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm not really like actively trying to fall in love these days, but like you seem nice enough. It just kind of like set that tone of like, well, if he's down to like 
mm-hmm. slowly get to know you, you're down to slowly get to know him and go there from there. Go. That's great advice. Yeah. Great advice. Great yeah, advice. Nick. Let go, let God, Godspeed. There you go. Have a great time. <laughs> so Have fun. Uh, do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I love it. So wait. Um, Glad we could change your starting life. Starting off with sliding in saying, I hear you've been asking about me. Yeah. Yep. So, something like that. Okay. Yeah. And there okay. you go. Right. And then hopefully he replies and says, like, I heard you've been asking about me or yeah, I totally would. Yeah. And then maybe there's some quick, small talk. Don't try. you. If he wants to keep things going answer back but like mm-hmm. you're you're trying to just get to a place where it says well hey i'm going to be in town next week how about me you your sister and some friends get together is there like maybe there's some bowling maybe there's some roller skating maybe there's an activity maybe it's just drinks yep and yeah. go from there there you go yeah okay all right okay all right girl all right, good luck let us know you got this yes. thank you yeah. Yeah. yeah i'll keep you updated thank updated. you so much yeah. i appreciate it bye 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 Bye. Fortune, it's been so fun hanging out with you as always. It's so fun hanging out with you, Nick. Thanks uh, for having me. And then uh, you're going to Europe. Yeah, for just for holidays. vacation. Yeah, because I have a whole new tour. <gasps> it's starting the end of January. All end of new, January. Where's your new, first couple stops? Uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, El Paso, Texas, Savannah. All right. Savannah, Georgia. Yeah. I was just there for Thanksgiving. It's, that's, that's I've never been. been. Lovely. Yeah, I'm going to Chattanooga, Knoxville, all those places. Awesome. Well, right. and then w- can people pre-order tickets now? Yeah, they're on sale on my website, fortunefemster.com. And then you could watch my Netflix special, Good Fortune, over the holidays. It's awesome if you haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely check out Fortune in person if you're in those cities. Yeah, Buy those tickets. Fun. And it's that will super be all, all new material, not not Good Fortune stuff. So uh, whole new act. Away. Whole new act. <laughs> yeah. Thank you again, Fortune. It's always great to be oh, with you. Thanks, uh, thanks, guys, for listening. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknickacastmedia.com. Cast with the K. Tomorrow on Going Deeper, we get into the Harry and Meg of it all. Uh, I've watched the uh, other episodes. Volume two. Slightly different uh, 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 takes. We have my friend Chloe, who's a Brit herself. We get the British perspective. We also have uh, the royal expert from uh, People Magazine, Michelle Tauber, People's Choice uh, royal expert. She's been their expert for a good 20 years? Twenty Over 20. Over 20 years. Nice. So not only our commentary, but we have a Brit and an expert. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and uh, we get into it. So be sure to tune in to that tomorrow. Crazy. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick for your favorite relationship stories and advice, and our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps. See you next time.